How's it going, Short Kings? It's week 11, and the Dwarves are back, this time having to play Florida Atlantic in Boca Raton. We decimated Florida International last week. Uh, just a nasty, nasty game from our perspective. And as a result, we're going to continue to change these sliders. First thing that we'll do is pop up the speed threshold to 20. Get a cat in the way of the screen. There we go. And then we're going to go ahead and drop some of our stuff down. Uh, you know, kind of uh, small adjustments as we continue to figure this out. And then we will go ahead and bolster the CPU again. So, you know, maybe it gets to a point where they're incredible. But hopefully it gets to the point where these games are really competitive. Or maybe we just get blown out. There's a small amount of recruiting that we need to get done. And since we've got our method of recruiting kind of dialed in, we're just going to keep uh, keep that up. Make sure that everybody has scholarship offers and remove the players that don't like us. So, Raging Cajuns, Scarlet Knights, the Jayhawks, and the Beavers are going to go ahead and get some commits from players that we were looking at. We can give a couple more scholarships out as well to some of these players that we just recently added to the board. Everybody's fully scouted, so we're going to add a few more players to the board and then give some points to these lower guys as well. So 37 guys on the board. I'm honestly not sure that we're going to be able to find anybody to add. Everybody with low lock is either has a deal breaker on our board already. And yeah, we will not be able to add anybody to the board because everybody who's not already on our board or locking us out is at 100% committed. So with our recruiting sorted out, we can go ahead and hop on the team plane and head down to Florida. This is an 81 overall Florida Atlantic up against our 72. So we'll see if their defense can get the job done. As we can see, the Owls have a pretty mediocre offense. Uh, 92nd in the nation in points per game, but they get a decent amount of yards. And defensively, you know, also not great on the amount of points that they allow, but decent in the uh, how few yards they allow. Our offense is not great. We just managed to put up a lot of points. And our defense is honestly pretty staunch, only allowing 80 rushing yards per game. They've got a few guys visiting, so we'll try to ruin their day. And their top players are those high 90s overall, except thankfully for us, it's a punter, a left tackle, and a right end. They do have a running back who is probable and a center out for pretty much the rest of the season. But we're just going to go ahead and hope that we can ruin this. I don't know if this is Lane Kiffin that we're playing against, but it'll certainly be an interesting game. We're going to be flying high, hopefully, today at FAU Stadium. Not a very uh, original name. And gosh, not a whole lot of fans in the stands here. I don't see a ton of Dwarves Blue. Hopefully that doesn't matter. It'll be an awfully quiet game. We're going to win the coin toss. That's fantastic. And, you know, let's just go random here. I'm not really sure what we want. So we'll go ahead and, I guess, receive the ball. It's one way to do it. It's an evening kickoff here, and Gene Nunez is itching for a touchdown. Let's see. Maybe we can get something going. We just need a couple of blocks. Donnie Schaefer picks up a man, and honestly, we should have taken the touchback. I guess that was pretty deep in the end zone, but we get it out to the 20, and we should be okay. Immediately, we're going to give it to Tlaib Noel and have him rumble forward for nothing. Not a great first play of the game, so we'll just go for the bread and butter. And, oh, almost find Dane Upshaw wide open. Just overthrew him a little bit. We've got a third and ten to deal with here now on the opening drive. They're going to bring a lot of pressure. We have a man open. Can I get him? Oh, my gosh. I had a cat run right in front of my screen. I literally could not see the game. We had Dane Upshaw open, but we weren't able to do anything about it. Damn you, Clark. 
We're going to be forced to punt this one away. We're going to try to get it to bounce on the ground. No, I didn't kick it short enough, so they'll have a good chance to return. Uh, he broke a tackle. Oh, this is terrible news. Terrible news. He finally goes down. It's a 25-yard return, and the Owls are immediately deep in our territory. There's a reason that I usually have the door closed when I'm recording, and it's that reason right there. I do not like it when the cats come in and get in front of me. And Wow. Good eight yards for Jay Warren on that one. On second and two, that's definitely a run. I read it properly, but we couldn't hit the hole, and Jay Warren's going to break a tackle. Now, it is fair to note that while this uh, FAU team is, what, 3-5 and five on the season, uh, we did just up the sliders, so they're going to be a little bit better than they would be had we played them in the last episode. And just like that, Owls on top, 7-0. Kick is good, no problem on that one. And we're really going to have to hope for Nunez to get something for us today, I feel like. Let's see, that, that uh, player... Speed threshold definitely hurts us a little bit, but that's a great, great return for Nunez. Returner of the year. They should just give him the ward already. Try to get the running game established a little bit here, but <laughs> Noel's going to lose a yard. This is not good news early in the game. Oh, gosh. I'm going to have to heave one up. Oh, that is not at all who we threw to. How inaccurate are you going to be today, Richie Kirk? Wow. I do not know what Richie was doing there. I was supposed to be throwing it to Dane Upshot literally in the middle of the field. Instead, it'll be a third and 11, and we got to try to hope for the best. The four verts comes out. We're going to – oh, he is the most inaccurate quarterback in the world right now. Again, trying to hit Dane Upshaw there. Richie Kirk's going to start the game 0-4 oh, passing. We're going to do a decent job getting that kick to the 25. And I have a feeling that maybe we got these sliders dialed in. Again, even though we are, what, 7-1 to start this season early, uh, we, we all know that that's not where we should be or, or what our record should be the first couple of games. A little bit too easy on the sliders. They're going to go into the hurry up. And uh, we might get blown out here. Second and one. They put that on the ground and just all these broken tackles. Ooh, we might have to lower the running back ability. It does not feel like we can pass. Quarterback gets sacked there, though. And I wanted to say it does not feel like we can tackle, but I guess uh, what I had previously said was also true. Second and 12. They're going to go back to the air. Wide open man. And that's just a great throw to Caleb Woods. Now on first down. Uh, I somehow just got beat really bad the stick a little bit wrong and it screwed me up they are moving the ball with ease it's going to be another run and another just fantastic stiff arm second and four now that's a handoff towards the edge ferris couldn't get the shoestring tackle so it's another first down on this first down quarterback kept it oh they got very unlucky there that's a glitch it's a free uh tackle for a loss they lose five yards because of the quarterback. Uh, who knows? Maybe <laughs> he's doing a dance. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is the most disrespectful thing I think I've ever seen on the football field. The Owls are so confident in their ability to score on us that the quarterback decided to take a play to dance. That's absolutely insane. And they're going to bail us out again. A little false start there on the, what was that? I think maybe the left tackle. Well, we can expect them to pass here on third and 15. I'm stuck on a lineman. That was on accident. We're going to hit him as he's throwing in. Lester with the interception. I think that's our third of the season. Yeah, actually, I don't know what I'm doing trying to run that one out. We'll take the touchback. We get the nice interception there. We get a chance maybe to tie this ball game up. The real question is, are we going to be able to do anything with the offense? We've got an open. Oh my! What it happened to Richie Kirk? Uh, what I killed our sliders. Richie might be the most inaccurate man in college football now. He does find Donnie Schaefer though. Seems about uh what one in five. He's gonna get one on target. One in six maybe. So we get our first completion and hopefully some stuff can work out for us. That's a finally uh, positive run there. Seven yards for Noel. 
This could be risky here on second and three. We're going to go with the toss play. Talib Noel, oh my gosh, lowering the player speed threshold and seeing those defensive ends sprint at him. There was no way he was getting to the corner. Really hoping for an accurate pass here on third and five. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure. We have the timing kind of right, but again, inaccurate pass. Khalif James never had a shot. Well, gum, good things have to come to an end at some point, and seems like our big winning streak might be today. Oh my gosh, can we tackle this guy? They muff the punt, it bounces off his noggin. We almost got lucky to pick it up. Actually, we were nowhere near it, but we hit him with bad field position at least. Inside the 30. We stopped him with an interception last time, and Devin Marks, he had a pick last game, and he was oh so close this time around. Maybe the last play of the quarter. I'm kind of going to give him a, a good look there. They're almost going to get the first down, but the clock will run out, and we'll go into the second. Down 7 nothing. Just some terrible passes from Richie Kirk. He's 1-7 in the quarter. We've got nothing going for us except for an interception. We're going to get real risky here. Calling it a run. Third and inches. We're going to engage eight. It will be a run. It's a play action. We hit him a couple times, and we brought him down. Fourth and inches. And the Dwarves make a nice stand. If we manage to win this game I feel like it'll be a miracle at this point and miracles can always start with a little Gene Nunez return although he had no blocking help from uh, Ferris there on the edge still a good 12 yard return if we're gonna win this game it's gonna be up to the running game and Tlaib Noel is gonna have to have some luck that's a great first down again question is can we get a first down well good hole there not the fastest back anymore we've just only slowed him down but he rumbles forward Giving it to him again. He actually picked up a nice little block there. Almost got hit from behind, but managed to get eight yards. You know, at this rate, we might see a little Donald Irby. Noel getting his, what, fourth carry in a row for another first down. From midfield, we're going to try a little play action. They won't bring a lot of pressure, and I'm going to take a sack. Unable to get rid of that one in time. Realistically, that's a spot where I should have scrambled. Instead, we're going to just try to play it safe. Oh, no. If we can get it off. I don't know who our right bumper was, but they were wide open at the first down marker. Instead, we got hit as we were thrown, and we're going to have to try to make a pass here. And Khalif James came down with it. What a play from the star wide receiver. And surprisingly, a very accurate throw from Richie Kirk. Certainly helped to quiet down the couple hundred Owls fans that are in attendance. Oh, man. We just got Owls swarmed there. Try a little slip screen on second and nine now. And they're running with Noel, but maybe, no, can't outrun uh, the defensive tackle. Loses a yard, third and ten. On third down. They're bringing some pressure. The timing's right there, Dane Upshot. Another good pass from Richie Kirk there. And they're going to take a look at this. I think he was definitely in on that one. Yeah, he's got two, almost three steps there, dragging the toes even on him. If they reverse this, we riot. Thank God they made the right choice. Two and a half minutes in the half. We'd like to get a little bit of a lead, or a tie ball game, I should say. So we'll find Norton. And we're going to be close to going into the hurry up. Inside the red zone, it's inexcusable for us not to come up with points. Noel got us that first down, and let's try a little hurry up here. We could use a couple of big plays from our line. It did not come there, though. Second and 12 go into the air. Oh, they have us covered way too well. This is a risky one. We find Schaefer inside the five, and that's going to be a face mask. So we are going to be right on the goal line. That half distance to the goal should help. Question is, are we going to be able to run successfully? A minute and 30 on the clock. We don't need to worry about timeouts, and Noel's going to lose yard. I think we have to go to the air to get this, really. We're going to burn as much of the clock as possible here, just because there's only a couple plays left that we can run. 
And on second and goal from the three, we're going to go with the read option. Handing it off to Tlaib Noel. It's going to get back to the line of scrimmage and nothing else. As far as I'm concerned, this is four down territory. Trying the read again. Kind of hoping that they crash down and Richie can take it for himself. He's got a block and Richie's into the end zone. Ooh, took a bit of a hit there, but should be a tie ball game now. Ten seconds left in the half. Ah, UTEP beats North Texas. By the way, the Western Arizona Giraffes, that series on Twitch has finished up. And if you would like to see some more of what we got going on, it's going to be a UTEP relegation dynasty. That's over on twitch.tv slash poonmaster69, of course. And this is going to be a decent kick. Let's see, Ferris, oh, somehow just weaved through everybody. They got seven seconds to get something done. Best case scenario here would be an interception, but not going to expect that. They're going to run and probably, yeah, take a timeout here. We're going to see a shot downfield. We know exactly what the play is going to be. It's a Hail Mary. I'm bringing Tyson back, and that's a terribly inaccurate pass, you know. Oh, we should have been able to pick that one off. But nonetheless, it's halftime, and we're tied up. And with the new sliders, the new, new, new sliders... Doesn't feel like we should be in this one at all. Nissan, go ahead and sponsor me since I'm showing this all the time. Going into this second half, if we can uh, get a quick little defensive stop here, I'll feel a little bit comfortable. Offense really figured stuff out on the last drive and it's not too terrible of a return. First and 10, it's a screen. Oh, they got marks. He wasn't able to pick it off. So it works out well for him. 12 yards to Caleb Woods. Those screen passes are going to be awfully dangerous. Quarterback, he's going to scramble. Oh, my gosh. We had the sack. We're going to get called for a face mask, though. Plays like that are so, so killer. But they're going to help us out just a little bit. Like getting that false start. First and 15 now. Good coverage. Oh, my gosh. But then we just whiffed. So they get seven yards out of what should have been two. Second and eight now. This is... Oh, I thought it was a screen. Quarterback's going to scramble again. That's another sack for us. That makes this a very big third down. A stop here would be so important. How to watch the screen. It is a slip screen. Can we get there with Brent Caps? No, I just whiffed. Thankfully, he stepped out of bounds. Oh, I... That was embarrassing. Th Thankfully, it's enough for us to force the punt. We will... I should have returned that. That was a great, great CPU punt. It was more than a great CPU punt. It was an outstanding one. They pinned us at the three. Absolutely should have fielded that one. Trying the read option just to get out of the end zone. Oh, that was dangerous. Wow. Wow. I am very lucky that they crashed down on Tlaib Noel there because Richie Kirk was open in the end zone for a safety. Maybe stupidly, we're going to try the uh, the slants here on third and one. Upshaw's wide open. Yeah, they didn't guard that, and thankfully, Richie makes a good throw. So after starting the game 1-7 of seven passing, Richie has worked his way up to 7-14, of 14, which is very useful for us, and Noel's... Only at 36 yards. This will be a long march of a drive if we can get down there. They're bringing some pressure. It leaves Tlaib. Just opened enough for the first down. I feel like I had somebody else that was a little bit more open than that. Continuing the passing assault. Whoever B is was open. But we're just going to get hit as we're throwing. And that was, he got crunched. Try to get some positive yards here on second down. Line holds actually very well. Very manageable third and three now. We're going to try the play action here. They're bringing some pressure. We got it. Oh, my gosh. We got it off in time, but just uh, Richie, when he's going downfield, it seems like this game, he's the most inaccurate. It's a pick with a huge return for the Owls. Just uh, that was, again, supposed to go to Dane Upshot. The pass was way too far in front. And now we're asking a lot from our defense. It's a screen. Oh, 
Oh, that everything went bad there. I thought that we could have had that. It's about time that they gashed us with the running game. And ah, only giving up five yards compared to what we could have given up isn't too bad. Now on second and five. Ooh, it's an option. Quarterback gets rid of it. He breaks a tackle, but the second guy pulls him down. It's third and one now. We're going to bring the house. On third down, they do hand it off. I called it a run to the left. Nobody could get free. Two broken tackles. And he's got the first and goal. Didn't get into the end zone. I thought it was a touchdown. Instead, they're just going to be at the goal line. We got to stop this. If it's not a run up the middle, they deserve to score here. And good stop. They're going to lose a yard. I'm going to engage eight until the day I, I die. It's another run. Two more missed tackles. We had him deep in the backfield instead. Jay Warren goes in for, what, his second of the day. Florida Atlantic is now going to go up seven late in the third quarter. All right, Gene Nunez. What can you do for me? It's been this spot all season. Well, honestly, not bad. <laughs> 35 yard return well so Richie has not been accurate deep downfield we got to keep him close at home and just go with these short little uh, crossing routes more often maybe good seven yards there I'm not too worried about the clock just yet it is uh, second and three late in the third if we can't score on this drive it'll be something to be concerned about hope that the offensive line can give us a little push with a run up the middle, but I guess before that, we're gonna go into the fourth quarter, down seven, and uh, bad tackling and bad passing are the only reasons we're not doing well in this one. Only three linemen for the defense here. That could greatly benefit us. Talib Noel, got a lot to work with, making a cut, and getting closer to midfield. Really gambling a lot on this drive, trying not to take too much time. We're gonna find, AJ Norton, but he dropped it. Oh, that hurts a lot. We had an easy first down, but the running back said, nope. Uh-oh, that's not going to help either. Third and ten now. Couldn't even get the screen off. We know that the four verts hasn't been too accurate today, but we're going to kind of have to go for it. He even went deep for Dane Upshaw. Couldn't come down with it. We're going to go for it from the 45-yard line. Hoping for an accurate pass. It's a play action. I don't really know why. And I couldn't even get it off in time. The routes didn't get run quick enough. And just the offensive line doing nothing for us. Time for the defense to figure something out here. Their running game was devastating last time. First and ten. They're going to put it on the ground. And we'll string him out. But just again, the tackling woes. As Jay Warren picks up a quick 10 yards. Well, the streak had to come to an end at some point. I'm going to actually just blitz a lot here. Uh-oh. That's not good. Penn thankfully pulls him down, but they're already in the red zone. I really do not think we can win this game the way that we're playing right now. Something impressive has to change if we're going to get a stop here and, and be able to score enough to at least take it to overtime. And... Damn it, Mark's not able to get there. I got beat as well. The only bonus on that play was that we got him out of bounds to temporarily stop the clock. On second and six. Is it going to be another run? And there's another <laughs> broken tackle. Another two for the third and inches. And this whole time, they're going to be burning time off the clock. It's another run. Oh, easy stop for us that time. Of course, we did rush pretty much everybody. Fourth and four, hold them to a field goal. There's also no guarantee they hit it, but that was a pretty easy one. Uh-oh. 17-7. This kicker's been putting it deep in the end zone all game long. It's going to continue, and I'm going to continue to bring him out. We've seen crazy things from Nunez. That's actually some decent blocks. He's just not going to have the speed to get past that guy. This... Florida Atlantic team is really fast. All right. This is where, you know, miracles are, are made. Throwing back across the field, we got Khalif James, and he 
You know, if we can score quick and get a stop, this, we could still be in this game. Four minutes on the clock. This is a risky throw. Oh, wow. It's not risky when you throw it out of bounds, I guess. Richie is 10 of 24. On second and 10. We're going to find Dane up shot, but <laughs> he only gets two before getting annihilated. Third and eight, bringing some pressure. And again, just taking a hit, taking a sack. It's fourth and 18. And we absolutely have to go for this one, which is a kind of a shame. On fourth and 18, pretty much game on the line here. And <laughs> wow. We have no offensive line today. Uh, I called the wrong play. I have to take a timeout. Well, they're in field goal range. Up 10. Three minutes in the game. They're just going to be running the clock here. The question is, can we get lucky? Clock burning commences. We got them into third and 14. But we need a miracle here. We can expect a pass on this one. I'm going to use our key on Wilcox to see what we can get going. Big, big play for us. In this defense, it's a handoff, actually. Did not expect that. Still get the fourth down, but they're about to go up two touchdowns. We're going to assume their kicker has a good chance to make this one. He's shown that he's solid, but we'll hope for a chance for G. Nunez to return it. And just, yeah, this, this kicker is lights out. Down 13, a minute and 18 left in the game. They really don't expect us to have a chance here, especially if we have zero blocking and they're not gonna call a face mask there? Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. Well, at least we know the refs are a joke too. First and 10, just heaving up some balls. Richie's awful today. I don't think there's anything that we can do here. Not going to stop me from throwing a pick, I guess. <laughs> oh, fucking A. Oh, GG, Florida Atlantic. The winning streak had to come to an end at some point. And I uh, went out with a whimper. I'm just going to run Warren a couple times. I'm not going to bother with the timeouts. And wow, just embarrassing. Not really anything to say after a play like that. We were outclassed and outmatched in every facet. Nobody could do anything well. And at this point, just to you know, hope for that miracle, we're probably gonna throw another pick. We got Upshaw open. Who knows, maybe we give ourselves some bolstered passing numbers. If they're gonna keep scoring, we're gonna keep trying to score. And we're across midfield, 40 seconds now. There's a bad pass to AJ Norton. Running the same thing again. <laughs> Take a sack. Well, white, waving the white flag there. I'm going to let the clock burn out. Final play of the game. Let's see if we can't get Richie to 500 on the day. Oh, he led AJ Norton. Where was that all game long? <laughs> oh, what a disappointing game for the Dwarves. Clock hits triple zeros. And we are going to fall to the mighty, mighty Florida Atlantic in Boca Raton. Jay Warren had no problems. 21 carries, 141 yards. And we had nothing doing on that one. 27 to seven ends up being the final score. Just a very disappointing game. The winning streak was bound to come to an end at some point. Just was hoping that it was a competitive game. Terrible game here for Richie Kirk. Sub 50% passing, two interceptions, no touchdowns. He got sacked four times. Awful. Noel averaging 2.7 yards per carry, only put up uh, half a century. And passing wise, I don't know, a couple players had decent games, but I'm just not impressed. Gavin Tyson and Jimmy Gross, the only two people doing anything on our defensive line and then Devin Lester did have an interception but the defense uh, just not great all around today and then Gene Nunez you know decent kick returns but nothing incredible from from what we expect out of him uh, both teams not putting up a whole lot of offense but Florida Atlantic didn't need to we kept giving him good field position and as the game wore on and we got more desperate it just got easier and easier for the Owls
142 yards rushing, only 78 through the air. And <laughs> they only converted one time on third down, but that's just because they didn't need a whole lot of third downs. They lose the turnover battle. Bad passes lead to bad interceptions. And uh, we end up really winning the total yardage battle because Florida Atlantic got to kick the ball off so often. Around the country, nothing too crazy happens. Uh, Texas over West Virginia. Play sad country roads there. UNC beats Virginia. SMU over Tulane. Yeah, just, you know, football. And somehow Richie Kirk is our offensive player of the game. Disappointing. You know, ugly loss is correct, especially if you look at the records. Uh, but we tumbled against Florida Atlantic 27-7. Have to agree with that. And if we were sniffing the polls coming into this week, you better believe all the pollsters feel righteous about not giving us any votes. Well, at least we get one silver lining. Our offensive coordinator and defensive coordinators are going to level up. We're going to get the thunder and herd on the road this next week, but that's going to have to do it for this episode. If you want to stay up to date with what the dwarves are doing, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you want more NCA 14, go check us out over on twitch.tv slash poonmaster69, where we're most likely live right now playing our brand new UTEP relegation dynasty. But besides all that, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you liked it. Otherwise, wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.